Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya we're starting from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 10, entitled Bhagavatam is the Answer to All Questions, Text 22. Today's October 3rd, 2021. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasvatim Vyasam Tatojam Udirayat. Before reciting this Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should first offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead Narayan, to Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Sarasvati, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayeshu Bhadreshu Nicham Bhagavata Sevya Bhagavat Yutamashloti Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki. So, text 22, chapter 10, canto 2 of Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm. We have the uh, verse in David Nagri in English transliteration on the board here, written by Vishnu. Bodhya Manasya. Bodhya Manasya. Rishi B. Rishi B. Atmanas. Atmanas. Taj. Taj. Jigrikshata. Jigrikshata. Karnal. Karnal. Cha. Cha. Nira Bidetam, Disha, Shoktram, Gunagraha. O Jamanas, Yerishi Beer, O Jamanas, Yerishi Beer, Atmanas Taj, G. Greek Shatta, Atmanas Taj, G. Greek Shatta, Carnal Cha, Nira Bidetam, Carnal Cha, Nira Bidetam. Disha Shotram Gunagraha Disha Shotram Gunagraha O Gyamanasya Rishi Beer O Gyamanasya Rishi Beer Atmanas Taj Ji Greek Shatta Atmanas Taj Ji Greek Shatta Karnal Cha Nira Bidye Tam Karnal Cha Nira Bidye Tam Disha Shotram Gunagraha Disha Shotram Gunagraha O Diamanas, your Rishi beer. O Diamanas, your Rishi beer. Atmanas Taj G. Greek Shatta. Atmanas Taj G. Greek Shatta. Carnal Cha near a bidye tam. Carnal Cha near a bidye tam. Disha Tro Tram Gunagraha. Disha Tro Tram Gunagraha. O Diamanas, your Rishi beer. Atmanas Taj Greek Shatta. Atmanas Taj G. Greek Shatta. Carnal Cha near Bidyatam. Carnal Cha near Abidyatam. Disha Shotram Gunagra. Disha Shotram O Jamanas Ya Rishi Beer. O Jamanas Ya Rishi Beer. Atmanas Taji Greek Shata. Atmanas Taji Greek Shata. Arnal Chani Abidyetam. Arnal Chani Abidyetam. Isha Shotam Gunagaha. Isha Shotam Gunagaha. O Yamanas Ya Rishi Beer. O Yamanas Ya Rishi Beer. Atmana Atmanas Taj Jigrik Shata. Atmanas Taj Jigrik Shata. Carnal Cha Nira Bidye Tam. Carnal Cha Nira Bidye Tam. Disha Shrotam Gunagraha. Disha Shrotam Gunagraha. Would anyone else? Oh, dear Rishi Beer. Oh, dear Rishi Beer. Atmanas Taj Chigrik Shatta. 
Atmanastajikvikshata Karnaucha nirabhidyetam Karnaucha nirabhidyetam Disha shrotram gunagraha Disha shrotram gunagraha We'll go to the word for word. Bodhya manasya. Bodhya manasya. Desiring to understand. Desiring to understand. Rishi B. Rishi B. By the authorities. By the authorities. Atmana. Atmana. Of the supreme being. Of the supreme being. Taught. That. That. Jigrikshata. Jigrikshata. When he desired to take up. When he desired to take up. Karnal, Karnal, the ears, the ears. Cha, cha, also, also. nirabhidyetam, became manifested, became manifest. Disha, Disha, the direction or the god of air, the direction or the god of air, Shrotram, Shrotram. the power of hearing, power of hearing. Gunagraha, Gunagraha, and the objects of hearing, and the objects of hearing. Translation. By development of the desire of the great sages to know the ears, the power of hearing, the controlling deity of hearing, and the objects of hearing became manifested. The great sages desire to hear about the self. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Granta Swami Prabhupada. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, by advancement of knowledge, one should try to know about the Supreme Lord, the summum bonum of, any, of everything. Knowledge does not mean knowledge only of the laws of nature or physical knowledge, which are working by the direction of the Lord. The scientists are eager to hear about the physical laws working in material nature. They are eager to hear through the medium of radio and television about things taking place far away from them on other planets. But they should know that the power of hearing and the instruments for hearing were given to them by the Lord for hearing about the self or about the Lord. Unfortunately, the power of hearing is misused in hearing the vibrations of mundane affairs. The great sages were interested in hearing about the Lord through Vedic knowledge and nothing more. That is the beginning of oral reception of knowledge. Om Gana Timiranda Shakinanjana Shakta Chakshur Militam Nina Kasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Nina Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Ragnatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitan Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padana Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopi Shah Gopi Kakanta Radha Kanta Namos Pate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavane Shre Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Kriye Vanche Kalpata Yubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Pyevacha Patitanan Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadar Shiva Sari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swami Niti Namine, Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharine, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desha Tarine. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 10, Text 22. Odya Manasya Rishi Bir Atmanastaj Ji Grikshata Karnal Chanir Abidyetam Disha Shotam Gunagraha 
by development of the desire of the great sages to know the ears, the power of hearing, the controlling deity of hearing, and the objects of hearing became manifested. The great sages desire to hear about the self. Hare Krishna. All right, so verse and purport here is about, is about hearing. Um, hearing. Um, Shravanam. Shin, shin, shin Actually, not, uh, several weeks ago, a member of our community asked me if there's some place in Prabhupada's writings, books, where it talks about how we're influenced by the hearing we expose ourselves to. So, so my response was, it's difficult. It's difficult to go uh, even a page or two in Prabhupada's books without hearing about that topic. So she was glad to hear that because she was having an experience about, yeah, when she exposed herself to that, then my consciousness, uh, it just gets really covered. And when I expose myself to hearing Kirtan, hearing Prabhupada lecture, then my consciousness is different. So this is, uh, yeah, can't, you can't, can't go too many paragraphs in Prabhupada's books without hearing about this principle of hearing. Um, we're, we're coming to the end of the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam in our study. We, we started with the beginning of the first canto about uh, uh, 11 years ago. And so uh, and here we're coming to the uh, so end of the second canto. Now, right at the very beginning of the second canto, really the second verse of the second canto, there is a, a um, yes, a really quintessential verse about hearing. Uh, so Shukadev Goswami, at his begin the beginnings of his teachings to Maharaj Parikshit, he says, Shrotavyadini Rajendra Nrinam Shanti Sahasrasha Apashyatam Matmatpatvam Griheshu Griha Medinam. So since I have the same volume here, I will read the exact translation of that verse. It's, so it's text two of chapter one of Canto two. Those persons who are materially engrossed being blind to the knowledge of ultimate truth, have many subject matters for hearing in human society, O oh, emperor. Mm. Mm. So uh, I'll just, so text three of chapter one, Canto two reads, the lifetime of such an envious householder is passed at night, either in sleeping or in sex indulgence and in the daytime, either in making money or maintaining family members. Text four, persons devoid of atmatatva do not inquire into the problems of life, being too attached to the fallible soldiers like the body, children, and wife. Although sufficiently experienced, they do not see their inevitable destruction. Pasha napi na pashati, meaning we see, but we don't see. We see, but we don't get it. And this body is going to die. All, it, uh, my parents died. Their parents died. It, 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 but still we're living more like, like the rat in the jaws of the cat rather than the kitten. Um, text five. O oh, descendant of King Bharat, one who desires to be free from all miseries must hear about, glorify, and also remember the personality of Godhead who is the super soul, the controller, and the savior from all miseries, the highest perfection of human life, achieved either by complete knowledge of matter and spirit, by practice of mystic powers, or by perfect discharge of occupational duty, is to remember the personality of Godhead at the end of life. Okay, so then, so this, this hearing, we're, we're going to hear, we're going to hear vibrations. And, and so bhakti yoga, anasaktasya vishaya nyatahamu bhyunjata, nirbanda krishna sambhade yuktam vairaga muchite, as we discussed yesterday in Bhagavad Gita course, that this, it's, it's a very world embracing approach to self realization and spiritual life. And it's not world rejecting, it's not like hearing is material. No. Hearing can be material or spiritual, depending on what we're hearing and what's our consciousness. Same with everything, same with eating, same with seeing, same with dancing and communicating and relating. 
There's the material version, there's the material version, and then there's the spiritual version, which turns the conscious, turns the self to its original consciousness. So specifically, this verse says, by development of the desire of the great sages to know the ears, the power of hearing, the controlling deity of hearing and the objects of hearing became manifested. The great sages desire to hear about the self. So desire to know. So to know, so that's the power of hearing. Like desire to smell, okay, that's the power, it's the power of smelling, desire to taste, okay, so that's the tongue. So materially or spiritually, we know by hearing, primarily, primarily. Mm. Yes. And, and so uh, uh, Prabhupada will often say that seeing is overrated. Because okay. oftentimes, and, you know, we're familiar with these arguments, like, okay, is there God? Can you show me God? Because the idea is, I only believe what I can see. I'm a man of rationality. So this, of course, is completely irrational and nonsense, making it even more absurd because it's done in the name of a man of reason. I only believe what I can see. So then, okay, have you ever seen radio waves? No. Do you believe they exist? Well, of course. Why? Well, first of all, okay, be, because we heard from an authority we trust, and that's accepted. Have you ever seen Tibet? No. So, so you're saying you don't believe Tibet exists. No, of course I believe Tibet exists. So, but you said you only believe, so we believe Tibet exists. Do you believe, do you believe in the atoms? Do you believe in electrons and neutrons? Of course. So you've seen them? No. So we can list hundreds and thousands of things that you and me and we all believe. In fact, we know, even though we haven't seen it. Do you believe the sun is a circle in the sky about three inches in diameter? No, no, it's, it's 1.4 million times the volume of Earth. It's, well, so you've seen that? No. So what I, what I see is a circle in the sky. So basically, we believe all these things. We know them because we hear from authorities we trust. That's, for the most part, the method the method for, um, for acquiring knowledge, right? So I, I heard from a friend who visited Tibet or I, 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 I read in a book and I, I trust the author that a, there's a place called Tibet. I, I, I heard in fourth grade about the atomic theory of matter and I, I trust my teacher. I, I trust my teacher. Uh, okay, so we hear from people we trust. Hmm. And so, so just, that's just to kind of torpedo the argument, like, um, uh, it's not rational. If, if, if you can't see it and you believe it, it means you're not a reasonable, rational person of science. Nonsense. Okay. So, uh, so this, let, let's, let's not get fooled or intimidated by such arguments. So what to speak of God? Like, okay, the self, the self, okay? Or even we, we see someone driving in a car we recognize and we might say, oh, oh yes, there is John Smith. Now we're not seeing John Smith, but we see his car because, okay. So similarly, we see the body, we see the body. And then, and then by hearing, by hearing. So, so much of this process is about cultivating trust in the authority of Srimad Bhagavatam trust in the authority of the Prampara teachers, the Prampara Acharyas. And I'm glad to say that as years and decades go on, more and more, yes, this is, this is the source of hearing that I trust about everything. This is the source of hearing that I trust um, much more than anything in the media or in anything else going on. So, so like, Okay, let's say even to, to know the self. Hmm. All right, so there's the seminal verse in Bhagavad Gita. 
As the embodied soul continually passes in this body from childhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at the time of death. The self-realized soul is not bewildered by such change. Okay, so we say, I, I've heard it from Bhagavad Gita and I accept we're not the body, we're the, we're the eternal spirit soul. At the same time, we're, we're not told, you must just accept blindly. We can look, we can look like, oh, okay, well, sure, I heard it from Bhagavad Gita, but, but what's my experience? Okay, if I look at my experience, we see, ah, it confirms what Bhagavad Gita says, that this, this authority, that yes, yes, I, I experienced myself in a, in a, in a toddler body, a five-year-old body, a teenage body. Okay, now I experienced myself, okay, in my 20s, 30s. So the body's changing, but there's some constant identity that I call I, I call David Wolf, Dear Govinda Das. Ah, yeah, so that's just what the Bhagavad Gita said. So that's, that's a confirmation. So whether through hearing from authority, logic, or direct experience, we can, we can get confirmation of all of the truths revealed in Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavad and everything given to us from Srila Prabhupada. And, and whatever we understand or not cognitively, whatever we understand or not cognitively, the special feature, the special quality of these vibrations coming, coming from coming from Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada, is that yes, they reveal truth and we're invited, we're invited to apply our logic and intelligence to see if it makes sense, to check out our experience, to see if it's confirming. And, and but even if we're not understanding these vibrations, these vibrations reveal truth and they're non-different from the truth they reveal. Meaning even if we don't understand it, we're transformed. Our heart and our mind and our consciousness is transformed from, from focus, from, from entanglement in illusion to, 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 to experiential impactful realization of truth apart from what we cognitively understand or not. So we're encouraged, we're encouraged. Uh, this, this is the main thing we're, we're encouraged for, that, um, to, that if we want, <clears throat> if we want to progress, first we need to look, what's, what's my goal in life? What do I want? What's important for me? If we want to progress in realization of the self with the small s and of the self with the large s, like here in this verse, the great sages desired to hear about the self. Self is given with large s. If we want to progress in realization that we're not the body, realization of, of, of practically palpably experience and coming out of the ocean of the enmeshment of the modes of nature the material ocean tishama tishama ham samudar tat mitru samsara sagarat krishna says the one who's sincere on this path i will I, I will lift them out of the ocean of material suffering so if we want to progress increase our hearing of this sublime transcendental sound vibration through hearing Bhagavatam, studying Bhagavad Gita, discussing Bhagavad Gita, increasing our chanting of Japa, increasing our kirtan, increasing chanting, recitation of the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Um, increase our hearing and we experience our consciousness transform increase our contact with Shotavyadani uh, Rajanja, Nuinam Shanti Sashra, the thousands and thousands and millions and millions of topics that are, that are simply the bubbles in the material ocean, the different Gramya Kata, as Prabhupada says here. Um, 
Okay. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the power of hearing is misused in hearing the vibrations of mundane affairs. So if we want to sink further into depression and quiet desperation, let, if that's our goal, we can increase our hearing of mundane affairs. We can increase our hearing of mundane affairs. What's, what's a mundane affair? Practically everything, like pretty much wherever we go, um, internet, most books like that. So, so the quality of what we expose our hearing to will, will directly affect the quality of our consciousness, our experience of life, our experience of joy or frustration or anxiety. Uh, I mean, so to the extent that we want to respond to the complexities, miseries, and disturbances of life with peace, calm, purpose, empowerment, joy, then we were encouraged to increase our hearing of, of Atmatattva. It's described in the first canto of Bhagavatam. Kamasyanenjiya pritir jivo yabeta labata labo jibeta yabata. Divasya tattva jigyasa nato yasche karmapi. So it's described there. Life's desire should never be directed towards just increasing sense gratification. One should aspire for a healthy life. Keep the car in good shape. Keep the car in good shape, but not to indulge in the car. Self-preservation. So that the body, the mind, the intellect, the emotions are in good shape. They're in good shape to support us in the real aim of human life, self-realization. Just like keep the car in good shape, but not that we spend 10 hours a day, I don't know, trying to figure out the carburetor and to clean this and clean that. Keep it clean and good shape. Don't neglect it. And let's, let's not give it too much attention. Give it enough attention so that we're enthusiastic to engage in that supreme goal of human, human life is meant for inquiry into, inquiry into the absolute truth. Nothing else should be the goal of one's works. Nothing else should be the goal of one's works. So, so to, to direct our power, as Prabhupada says here, uh, uh, the power of hearing and the instruments for hearing were given to them by the Lord for hearing about the self or about the Lord. So, Sometimes it's asked, well, how can, how can hearing, how can material vibration use, be used for spiritual emancipation? So that's the thing. So this is not material vibration, the Vedas, the Bhagavatam, it's spiritual vibration. And our, our tongue and our ears, all, all our senses, yes, they're material at the same time. If we have a little job of sincerity, then Krishna gives us that bhakti shakti and we get to use them spiritually. In fact, that's, that's what, just like a prisoner in the prison cell. He can use his senses and his mind in ways that'll just entangle him further in the prison life, or he can use his mind senses in a way that, that supports him to go towards liberation from prison life to a, to a real free life in society. Mm -hmm. So Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Satatam kirtayanto mam yatantascha tridavrata. Tridavrata means with a vow of determination. Namasyantascha mam bhakya nitya yukto pasate. So Krishna says that the truly great souls use their power of speech and hearing satatam to, to be engaged in kirtan. Of course, we're familiar with kirtan with like instruments and dancing, and that's a form of kirtan. What we're doing now is kirtan. Kirtan means to describe or glorify self-realization, the supreme personality of Godhead. Any devotional service is, is a form of kirtan, actually. Shravanam, kirtanam, vishnu, smaranam, padasevanam, mm. archanam, bandhanam, dasyam, sakyam, atmani, vedanam. Nine processes of devotional service the foundational processes are shravanam kirtanam, here in chant. We want to progress on this path, which is synonymous with progressing to our own happiness. Increase shravanam kirtanam. 
That's be do have. Everything flows from there. It's be do have cause. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prima Sajja Kabunoi Shravanadi Shuddha Chitta Kariye Udai. That love of Krishna is eternally situated in the hearts of all living entities. It's not something to be contrived or some artificial imposition from an external source. And it's awakened by hearing and chanting. So increasing our hearing and chanting of transcendental sound vibration, to, we, it moves us to deeper connection with the, with the soul of our soul, the core of our very being. So that's, and then from there, naturally our actions are transcendentally auspicious and we have what we have what enlightened souls have be we do have in its most essential profound sense increasing our hearing and chanting somehow or other just like okay but my mind says this and that okay somehow or other increase our hearing and chanting will will never regret and the results also earlier in Bhagavatam, Sutta Goswami describes to the sages at Nami Sharanya headed by Sonic Vishi, Shin Vitam Sakata Krishna, Punya Shravana Kirtanam, Vidanta Stoya Bhajani, Viduno T Saritsatam. The translation is Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is the Paramatma super soul in the heart of all living entities, and the benefactor of the truthful devotee, personally cleanses the heart from material desire for material contamination for the devotees who have developed the urge to hear Srinvatam, to hear his messages, which are in themselves virtuous when properly hearing, when properly, um, uh, when, when properly heard and chanted. So, so the super soul in our heart, Paramatma in our heart, an expansion of Krishna. So in the body, there's us, the spirit soul, and sitting right next to us, there's an expansion of Krishna named Super Soul or Paramatma. And so Krishna, Krishna wants us to cleanse our heart. Krishna wants our bliss you know, millions of times more than we want. We're like, we're like pretty invested, very invested in our self-sabotaging, self-sabotaging, uh, uh, you know, do, doing the same thing for the 10,000th time, trusting I'll get a different result than the first 9,999 times resulting in misery. So all of that material misery, it's, it's meant to turn us towards, ah, okay, so let me live for my eternal life. Let me live for that, that happiness that will never be devastated by time. The foundational process for that, there's a process. It's not, it's not magic. Well, it, it, everything's magic in a sense because everything's inconceivable to the material mind. But it, for, for most all of us, it requires heavy lifting. All right doesn't need to be it could be i'm choosing to increase my shravanam kirtana my hearing and chanting krishna cleanses our heart from all the dust the weeds the dirt the grime the filth that's there just all the, the, the greed the envy the lust the jealousy the, the the useless anxiety krishna cleanses our heart and and the result is the result, we experience ourselves rising above, becoming transcendental to the effects of nature's lower modes, greed, lust, anger. And thus, it describes in the Bhagavatam, the devotee becomes completely satisfied in, in, in goodness, in goodness. And then Bidya te Vidya Grantish Chijan te Sarasam Shek Shian te Chasyakarmin Trishta Evat Manishray. Thus, the knot in the heart is pierced and all misgivings are slashed to pieces. The chain of fruit of activities is terminated when one realizes the self as master. Bayam Dviti Dvitiya Binivesha Tasya, to the extent that we continue to misidentify the self with the body, we will, we will be in anxiety. There's just no way around that because the body is temporary, will be destroyed, just like to use the vehicle analogy. We misidentify the self, the driver for, with the car, and then we spend our time. That, so so our, our consciousness determines what we're, what we're doing. So yeah, so I'm going to spend all my time taking the car. I'm not going to feed myself. I'm not going to bathe. I'm not going to. And then, and then we're miserable, but we think, no, 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 look. 
look, I just got the car wash. I just, I just, I, I just had it serviced. Well, that's nice, but yeah, but you, you know, you, you, you haven't, you haven't eaten anything for two days. You look terrible. So, so we identify with the spirit so self, and we come alive to what's actually nurturing, what's actually nourishment for the self and the core of that. Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, hearing and chanting about self-realization, about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then the knot in the heart is pierced. Right? This knot in the heart, it's, caught, it's like so much misery and all misgivings, doubts are slashed to pieces. Again, whatever we cognitively understand or not, we, we give ourselves to this hearing process he, through japa chanting of Hare Krishna, through hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, through morning programs like this. And then whatever we cognitively understand or not, we transform, we transform from muddled consciousness to clear knowledge, to clear knowledge from from a heart that's covered with grime and dirt and slime to, to, to radiate, to shining brightly and cleanly. So this, this is the process, quite simple. It's, it's, it's simple and easy. I, I might make it hard because I'm, I'm attached to the grime. That grime is very precious to me. Don't try to take it away. So, yes, um, Okay, so hearing through the parampara system, parampara system means the line of disciplic succession through our current, so to, to, to hear from our current link to the disciplic succession, Srila Prabhupada, as much as possible. And this is, this, is the, this is the peace and happiness formula. I have enough experience to know that, to, to have experienced that. And so, um, and this is important because it's one thing if we're like exposing ourselves to hear things which we know this is Maya, this is Maya. Okay, that's clear enough. And then we're influenced. Of course, as we advance, as we progress in knowledge, then we can like expose ourselves to anything. And the osmosis goes the other way. And we we, we trans, that's the actual process to transform matter into spirit. We endeavor, I mean, everyone can give their opinion of how effectively, but for example, in the Safatov seminars, we, 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 we use music that's, that's not necessarily produced with um, self-realization or um, connection with super soul in mind and at heart. So the principle is yukta bhairagya. Everything can be used in Krishna service. Now, that could be, that principle is true and it can be misused in a whimsical way. So anything I do, that must be service, that must be bhakti. No, no, it, it takes maturity and realization to know how to engage the material energy in Krishna service. So like the car or the money in the bank account or relationships. It's not intrinsically material or spiritual. It's Krishna's energy. What's our consciousness in the utilization? And that determines whether the car, the money, the communication is material or spiritual. Of course, so Srila Prabhupada came to the West where, quote, there were no devotees, but he, he didn't see... New York, Paris, London, Los Angeles. He didn't see, oh, there's no devotees here. No, he, 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 had, he had such deep, profound realization of self-realization of Krishna consciousness that he was a touchstone for transformation. And to the extent that we increase our hearing and hand, hearing and chanting of spiritual sound vibration, like Srimad Bhagavatam, like we're doing here, then we also get that potency Wherever we go, we're transforming hearts from, from material illusion to, to, uh, to spiritual enlightenment. Now, so Shastra, Bhagavatam, Prabhupada often also cautions. See, it can be more dangerous if we're hearing something that's kind of masquerading as representing the disciplic succession, as representing Prabhupada, as representing the parampara. 
like it's masquerading that way, but but really it's um, it's 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 covered in Maya. There's a text Prabhupada often quotes: "Shruti Smriti Puranadi Pancharatra Vidim Vida Ikantiki Harir Bhakti Utpataya Eva Kaupate." That yeah, he, he, even if we're hearing something that sounds like Krishna consciousness, but it's not according to the prompt, it's not according to the Shruti, the Smriti, uh, Pancharatra, Puranas, Bhagavatam, it's not a, but it sounds like that, that can be even more dangerous than just like, than just like, you know, whatever, hearing a pop song on the radio or um, whatever, or just reading some you know, trashy novel or something. Like, you know, obviously Maya. Because because then we get con then then we get confused about what is Krishna consciousness? What is the philosophy and practice of Krishna consciousness? And and what's not? Like like as long as we're clear and like, okay, here now I'm now I'm doing stuff that this is not Krishna consciousness. I know what the path is. And I'm not on it right now, but I know what the path is. And okay, and okay, this will have some effects, but this is where I mean, meeting myself where I'm at, whatever. But, and then, so, so Prabhupada gives a lot of caution, a lot of caution, even in his well known purport to the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. He talks about chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. And he cautions that. Like he gives the analogy, like milk, mm. milk fed to a serpent, then the milk and the serpent becomes even yeah, more insidious. That describes it well. That because, like, of course, the Hare Krishna Maha mantra is always pure. Bhagavatam is always pure. But if we're if we're getting it with, from someone with non devotional motive, motivations, it's like, like, yeah, yes, yeah, so I'm chanting Hare Krishna to realize that I am Krishna, that I am. God, uh, like that, then it, it, it can have poisonous effects. The mantra is pure, but the, but the consciousness in the chanting is not. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and so Prabhupada says, I, I, yeah, it was yesterday, I, I led two classes and discussions yesterday. One of them, we talk about Prabhupada's letter to Andrea Temple, who was in the Bahamas at the time, late 60s. I think it's a woman, I'm not sure. But uh, he, he, he said to her, uh, he, he said, yes, he said, by, by receiving, by hearing this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra from my followers, you're receiving it directly from me. You're receiving it directly from me. So, so we get to represent Prabhupada with, you know, with a, a, an endeavor to be more and, pure, more and more pure in that direction. And... Uh, and so my encouragement is like, let us, let us hear directly from Prabhupada. And if we're doing that, let's increase that. Read Prabhupada's books, hear, hear his lectures, uh, read his letters, um, read Prabhupada's books. Then, then we're equipped on all levels. We're equipped on all spiritually, philosophically, intellectually, to make distinctions, to make distinctions between, okay, what's, what's going to be, in one sense, nothing is Maya. There's a purport, I think it's six canto. Prabhupada writes, those who see everything as Maya, instead of seeing everything as Krishna, they're offenders. Because of course, everything's Krishna. Still, we want to make distinctions. To, to spiritually progress, it's vital that we make distinctions. Make distinctions. Sure, this is Krishna's energy, but it, how can I relate to this energy in a way that actually enhances self-realization and connection with super soul for me and others? Right? We've often given the example of the vodka in the vodka bottle. Of course, it's Krishna's energy. And if I relate to it by drinking the vodka, well, that, that, that won't help. That won't help if my goal is self-realization. So that's why we're given the regulative principles. We discussed that yesterday in discussing chapter 12. Okay, if we're not on that platform of pure, spontaneous, loving devotion to Krishna, which I'm very, very far away from, but, um, 
Okay, then, then, okay, then, then follow. Follow joyfully the regular principles of freedom right? to, to help guide us how to relate to Krishna's different energies in such a way that we, we progress out of the ocean material existence. Um, yes, so that can be very dangerous to, to hear something that kind of like appears like, like it's representing Prabhupada or Prampra, but it's actually, it's actually deviant. It's not Prabhupada's spirit at all. And we're protected if we take shelter in Prabhupada, then we know, then we know, then we're protected. And then with, if we're protected, we can humbly go anywhere. Not that we want to whimsically go anywhere, but we know, wherever our service takes us, we're, 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 we're able to be a touchstone for transformation to bring people to self-realization, inspire people in self-realization, Krishna consciousness. And speaking of this, I'm reminded, this was, uh, this was a while ago. This was in uh, 1991, 92, and uh, 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 Kalyapani Prabhu, actually, um, uh, he, in, in 2003, he, he came from England to, to Florida to take the, to participate in the Safto Foundational Event Seminars. But I actually know him from like a dozen years before that, in 91, 92, he came from England to be, I was part of a process a project called Krishna Fest. And it was, well, we traveled around the United States, but uh, especially East Coast, but uh, our base was the Tampa area. We were in, we were in Brooksville, 1991. We were in Brooksville, <clears throat> which at that time which was, was home of the Florida Ku Klux Klan. True story. Yes. Um, I mean, we, we, we made friends with the vice principal of the high school, 1991, and she shared she shared that she, uh, she came to Brooksville in 1983 and she's from New York. So she drove down, she drove down and she went to the gas station in Brooksville when she arrived and they, they refused to fill up her car with gas because she had a Yankee, she had a Yankee license plate. True stories. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. One, just one more Brooksville story. There was some, one, one, one other devotee in our group. His name was Bhakti Jeffrey. He was a little older than me. So he was maybe in his mid thirties. I was in my early thirties, but anyhow, so Bhakti Jeffrey, he would wear, he would wear, um, you know, uh, like in Grahasta clothes. It was in a Korta, Doti Korta, white Doti Korta. And he would, he would walk around. It was like country. It was pretty far outside of town. He would walk around. So he was doing that for weeks. Then one time he was walking and at one of the ranches, there were some, some black bodied fellows and they were on the, yeah, they were, they were like leaning on the fence and somehow they got into conversation. So, so Bhakti Jeffrey learned from the black bodied fellows that they were, they were avoiding him because they assumed dressed in white that he was Ku Klux Klan. True, true stories. So then they, but actually he made friendship and he taught them to chant Hare Krishna. It was quite auspicious, but so these are true stories. So anyhow, Kayapani was, I remember one time, because it was just at that time, and this was before, inter, this was before websites, before internet, I mean, I, I wasn't on email, I mean, email existed, but not for me. There was no websites like that. But there was just more and more, more and more literatures were coming out that was kind of like, oh, did you hear? what this one wrote and this Babaji wrote and did you hear this? And I remember we were in like an evening program and Kayapani, he was leading the class. And this is 1991, Brooksville, Florida, early 1991. And he, he, he said, he feel, he said, he said, he said, I just feel, I feel, I feel fortunate that I just have no attraction to any of this. I'm, and he said like, not that like, not that like, uh, you know, he, he was claiming they had, you know, great enthusiasm for Prabhupada's books and he had his struggles. He was, but he said, really, if, 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 if I want to, if I want my Krishna consciousness, I really just want Prabhupada. And so he was, because it's one thing if we have attraction than to kind of discipline ourselves, to discipline ourselves. But he was appreciating that he, he somehow got the mercy of this. He has no attraction for any of any of this other stuff in the name of Krishna consciousness. 
not not that it's all not Krishna consciousness, but wherever we go, we want to re- if we want to progress solidly on the path, we want to relate to it, process it through the pure lenses of Srila Prabhupada. And so we get good at that the more we directly hear from Srila Prabhupada. So text 22, Canto 2, Chapter 10, Text 22. Bodhyamanasya Rishi Bir Atmanastha Ji Greek Sita Karnal Chadira Bidye Tam Di Shashotam Gunagraha. By development of the desire of the great sages to know the ears, the power of hearing, the controlling deity of hearing, and the objects of hearing became manifested. The great sages desire to hear about the self. Hare Krishna. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your association. I welcome any comments or questions. Malani. Hi, Krishna. Thank you for class. I really appreciate um, the last point you made about um, the sound vibration. How, you know, like it points out to responsibility for our spiritual life. Yeah. And so in that responsibility, it's it's easy to distinguish or make distinction between what's really Maya and take me down away from Krishna and you know what activity or reading or reading is bringing me to Krishna closer. That's, you know, it's easy to experience it. It's easy to, uh, and then after that, it's responsibility for our spiritual life. Like, okay, what do I want in my spiritual life? And, what activity is going to lead me to make progress and what activity are leading me to away from progress. And in those uh, insidious katas, like speaking about Krishna or speaking about spiritual life, I found that um, the way it, is, it seems more, a lot more tricky because in a sense, we can have the illusion of transcendence or the illusion of being uplifted while in reality that those healing may be very insidious like i said and really uh, infringing on the bhakti at the beach that's just in a process of growing and really watering weeds when in fact we think we are watering the creeper and in terms of responsibility it seems almost like in order to be protected from those because they are so difficult to to uh, um, distinguish and to um, identify um, one need to be really like strict and like, okay, I'm holding down to the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada and I'm kind of like horses, you know, like who have those things to protect them from looking there and there. The, the, the blinders, yeah. And, and to do that, but not based on experience. Yeah. I was just, um, in order to be responsible, because one or I may not have all the knowledge to make, to make those distinctions. And sometimes, even if I have knowledge, it's, you know, it's so difficult to distinguish what's a creeper and what's a weed that I may really easily be illusioned. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for that, Melanie. Yeah, so in, in, in the purport, Prabhupada says, unfortunately, the power of hearing is misused in hearing the vibrations of mundane affairs. So the insidious uh, sort of types of vibrations you're talking about, they're basically they're basically mundane affairs that that um, that energize my desire for mundane affairs under the guise behind a thin veil of something that looks like Radha Krishna, like that. So uh, you know that. That's where our, our sincerity comes in. That's where, and yeah, you point to discipline. You know, there's a 
the seed verse, one of the seed verses in Bhagavad Gita, Tesham Satata Yuktanam, Bhajatam Pritipurvakam Dadami Bhudi Yogam Tam Yenamam Upiyantite. So Krishna says, like, like if, you're, if we're sincere, he'll give us the intelligence how to come towards him. He'll give us the intelligence. So like, am I sincere about, really I want mundane affairs, but I want it to look spiritual, really cool. You know, it's not mundane. You don't understand. Or am I, or, or am I really wanting, I'm really wanting to serve Prabhupada's mission. I really want to realize who I am as spirit. So I really want to, I really want to come towards not, if not loving, at least sincere devotion to Krishna. And then if that's really what I want, then it means I'm, I'm willing to discipline myself. Here are some spiritually good looking so-called mundane affairs that they're attractive for me I like that. But I see that's, that's not going to take me to my actual goal. So we're sincere. Krishna says he'll give us the intelligence. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Melanie. Vishnu. Thank you, Thank you for the class. Uh, what's in the purport where Prabhupada said, like, the scientists, they have eagerness. Yeah. But he didn't say they have sincerity. Right. But what, what's the difference? Eagerness and sincerity? Because he, he said, like, if they even have a drop of sincerity, you get the bhakti shakti. They don't even have that. So. Okay. All right. So thanks for that. So Vishnu is referring in the purport of this verse we're reading today, text 22, chapter 10, Canto 2. Prabhupada writes, mm -hmm. the scientists are eager to hear about the physical laws working in material nature. So we could, I think we could say they're sincere. I'm, I'm sincere about Mandina Fair, that they're eager, they're sincere. They're eager. He probably uses the word eager twice. They're eager to hear through the medium of radio and television about the things taking place far away from them on other planets. Hmm. But they should know that the power of hearing and the instruments for hearing were given to them by the Lord for hearing about the self or about the Lord. Yeah. So of course, when Prabhupada's talking about scientists, Maya Bhadi, Sahajis, he is talking about like a group of people. And it's often helpful to look at how, how am I those material scientists? Prabhupada's referring to Maya, the Sajjanaji, the Mayaba. So um, I guess I, 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 your question moved me to see a Prabhupada use of that word eager twice. And so it seems to me eager could be used synonymously with, with sincere. So whether it's the scientist, whether it's ourselves, what are we sincere about? What are we eager for? And like, Okay, I remember once I was with, this was, uh, uh, I was an empowered Sankirtan devotee. And he was talking about when he got trained in Sankirtan and, um, and the Sankirtan leader. And uh, one day he, he, forgot to, he forgot to pack particular books and a Sankirtan leader said, how come you forgot to pack those particular books? And he goes, uh, oh, I forgot, I forgot. So the Sankirtan leader asked him, um, in the past month, have you ever forgotten to um, eat a meal or sleep? So he said, no. So then he saw, oh, I'm sincere about sleeping and eating. I don't forget, I'm sincere. So how, how, how since, so we're, we're sincere about something. I, I'm sincere about eating and sleeping. How sincere am I to serve with excellence, to, to serve Krishna? How sincere am I to chant Krishna's names, to chant Krishna's name to ten of me? How sincere am I to follow Prabhupada? So we're eager and sincere about something. So, let, so what, what, what's, let's take a look. What are we eager and sincere about? And what's the effect? And what are the possibilities for transformation? Thank you, Vishnu. Damayanti. Hare Krishna, thank you for the class. Um, um, how come uh, Krishna is the one who does the um, cleansing of the heart? 
of the sincere devotee and not the devotee themselves. Like, wh why does Krishna want to do that, the scrubbing work? Okay. Well, I, I, I see it as teamwork. You know, I, I, I see this as, you know, work, work like everything depends on us and pray like everything depends on Krishna. So the verse we quoted, Srinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravan Kirtana, Vidyanta Stayu Bhajan and Viduna Ti Saritsatam. Sri Krishna personally cleanses the heart from material desire for the uh, devotee who's developed the urge to hear his messages. It doesn't say that we don't clean our heart. It just says like when we're like like we're we show a drop of sincerity, 0.1% of sincerity. Yeah, I want to clean my heart from all this junk, all this nonsense. We show a little sincerity, then Krishna's like there a thousand times. I'll, I'll help. I'll do it. Yeah, I'm going to give some elbow grease. To, that's his love. That's his compassion. He's not forcing, but he's reciprocating with our sincerity. And yeah, I mean, I appreciate your comment, your question that, yeah, we want to be like, yeah, let me clean my heart. That, like, that's not, it's not wrong to think that way. It's not invalid. Let me clean my heart. Let me work hard externally in service. Let me work hard in pulling those weeds and, and taking the junk out of the junkyard. Yeah, let me clean my heart. Work like everything depends on me. And simultaneously, that verse I quoted is emphasizing, highlighting the aspect that, and Krishna will personally, Krishna will personally do cleansing because he, he wants us to have a clean heart and a blissful life a lot more than we do. That's my understanding. He's eager to help. Malani. I remember a few years ago, I was speaking with someone who is very fervently uh, practicing Christianity. And that person was also taking courses, personal development courses. And it was very interesting for me to hear from her that, in fact, she wasn't taking the personal development courses because she felt it will clean her heart. Because for her, it's, it's, it was clear that the heart is cleansed by the grace of the Lord only, that we don't have the power to clean our own heart. And there is so much of that in Christianity. And so she was taking personal development courses because she wanted to do her, her, her part. So, and because only Krishna knows what to clean because some of the, of the dirt in our heart, we, not, we may not be ready. Even so we may not want it. We may not want the greed. We may not want the envy. We don't, may not want what we see in our heart. Only Krishna knows when it's the right time to take it away because um, we may not be ready to have it taken away. Maybe taking it away means we will go to a place of false pride or false prestige or a place where it will not be conducive for our Krishna consciousness. Also, I wanted to share that uh, in our class, Chaitanya Charitamrita class, we are in chapter 12 of um, Chaitanya Charitamrita. And you know, it's, uh, this, this is, really is a quintessential part of the Chaitanya Charitamrita about the cleansing of the heart, about really being able to make the sanctuary of our heart clean. And in that pastime, it's clear that Lord Chaitanya, he gathers a pile of dirt that's bigger than all the dirt gathered by all the devotees that were there cleaning the, the Gaudicha temple. So this indicates that they are very eager. So they are, they are cleaning and they are, they are doing their best. And even Lord Chaitanya is encouraging the one who are really gathering a lot of dirt and he is the one who ultimately really gathered the, the biggest pile of dirt. So that's also um, clear in that past times that the Lord, Lord Chaitanya, he, he, he clear, a lot, the Lord clear from our heart all the dirt and he has the power to do that while we need to do our work and, and our power to do that is limited, like our power to do anything else is limited because we are infinitesimal and is infinite. Thanks for that, Melanie. 
Yeah, that Gundicha Marjan pastime, chapter 12, Madhya Leela, Chaitanya Charitamrita, that indicates the interplay of, of, of those aspects. Because Lord Chaitanya guided each devotee to work hard, to, to, to sweep and clean and dust. He, he guided each devotee. And when he sensed they weren't giving 100%, he would playfully, let's yet seriously hold up the mirror. Sometimes he would use sarcasm. Yeah, so he guided them to work hard. And at the same time, he personally collected more dust than all of them put, put together, indicating just what you say. And I like that, that point you made also, because we can, I could think, yes, I just want my heart to be cleansed. Please reveal my Maya and take it away. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm actually not ready for all my uh, dirt, grungy Maya stuff to be revealed. I'm reminded of a quote I've heard attributed to St. Augustine from the Christian tradition. Oh, Lord, give me chastity, but not just yet. So, uh, <laughs> yes, and yes. I appreciate that. And also, oh, uh, I'm not hearing. I'm not hearing. Oh, I don't know why. Now, now, I'm, hearing, now I'm hearing. Um. I, I appreciate what you see, and I can see often, I want to be free from envy, or I want to be free from greed, or I want to be free from anger, or, or you know, illusion. And I can see I want to be free, why? Not because I want to serve the Lord, it's like an, a cover of sense gratification, because I will feel good about myself, because I will be a person that people can respect, or because I will feel less pain, or because you know, a long list of self-interest rather than interest in devotional service. Thanks for that, Melanie. This week, I, um, well, in our home here, there's like this little ecosystem that developed in our bath, in our shower stall of like this perfect kind of like fly and worm thing and um i was ignoring it <laughs> and they multiplied oh then i finally and i kept thinking i want um garuda to clean it because there's like killing involved and then i want the kids to do it and i, I like it but anyway it wasn't getting done but i finally like got into the it cleared into i got the products out i set it out for like i was just like building up to like this killing of this um pests anyway it's kind of gross that that happened but it's because and i was rejecting also just the design of the shower here uh it's like not it, it, i was I, so i was just anyway i had like a ton of self-realization once i finally cleaned it i'm like oh this is what it's like for krishna scrubbing and like yeah like we're so ignorant like these worms you know they don't know that they're occupying that they're disturbing us and you know that um Anyway, and it was so, and there's like kind of like a lot of vi violence and like destroying their habitat and what they were, their comfort. And <laughs> anyway, um, there was a lot of self realization and cleaning that day <laughs> a few days ago, but there's still, I still have to keep working on it. And like, cause there's still like, there's some sort of crevices we need to like, you know, close up. They're still there. It's a lot of work and it's like kind of uh, disturbing. Anyway, that's, another anyway that i was already wondering earlier just a few days ago why is it krishna that does this cleaning um but you answered my question so i'm not asking again but i just thought i'd share a personal experience this week <laughs> thank you Dominante, for that real life additional metaphor for cleaning the heart and i appreciate how you said like I need to keep, because like we, we use the metaphor of pulling the weeds from Rupa Goswami to Chana Charitamrita. I'll mention it was about uh, 12 days ago in, uh, almost two weeks ago in, in Denver. I, 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 I led a, an evening program on, on Rupa Siksha, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita chapter 19, Lord Chaitanya's instructions to Rupa Goswami. And that's the direct place where he talks about, yeah, what are the garden? pull the weeds. And if you don't pull the weeds, you'll, you'll wonder the weeds. So Lord Chaitanya directly explained that to Rupa Goswami. Actually, the, the verses were picked out for me from 
by Tusta Krishna Prabhu, who's the temple president there at Iskandeva, because he, he knows that's what kind of like Safato is about. So it was a fascinating discussion. But then, um, yeah, so there's, so there's pulling the weeds and then we might pull the weeds, you know, we, we might pull the weeds and then we think that's it, I've done it. But realistically, I know for me and most people I've ever met, most people, like, we need to be like, like if I'm not really vigilant, then I find a few months later, a few weeks later, a few years later, the same weeds are there as strong and bigger than ever. Because so we pull the weeds and that's the, and we're transcendental. But that doesn't mean we're steadily on that stage because of our psychophysical karma and nature. We've got the propensity to grow the same sorts of weed, the same form of envy or laziness or like that. So this pulling the weeds, it tends to be like something to, uh, to attend to again and again consistently. Thank you, Domianti. That reminds me of like that metaphor, like with taking off on a rocket um, that um, you you once you start the rocket, you have to keep a certain velocity or else you fall back right to the planet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If we really, if we really want to uh, get out of the clutches of the material energy it takes quite some humongous thrust, some humongous thrust. And if we kind of become complacent, we're pulled down again. That's, that's the process. That's a fact. Anandini. Hare Krishna, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for, um, for focusing, well, the verse does focus on hearing. I appreciated this focus on, on hearing and to um, contemplate on that, how, we, how influenced we are by what we hear and that we have a lot of power to decide where, what we want to hear or where we want to hear from. And, and it's like, I was thinking, it's like, it's very obvious or more obvious to many that what we eat has an effect on us. And actually it's the same for all our, all our senses. Also what we see, what we smell, our, our, our smell has such a huge, the smell has a huge impact on our consciousness, on our system. And um, I was thinking about how, um, how, it, how important it is for me to hear again and hear again, even if it's, if it's something that I, I can easily go, to, oh yeah, I, I heard before, I'm not the body. <laughs> but it's not, it's not so simple. <laughs> and when I hear again and again and again, I get like deeper understanding, deeper realization. And this, um, I don't know if it was some, a few, some days, some, somewhere in the past days, um, we, we, I think you spoke about how, um, I know this example with someone who has jaundice and eats sugar, and then sugar is very bitter. And it's the same when we do devotional service or sadhana, it can be very bitter. And, and, um, and that's something I heard many times and I just didn't listen anymore what it means. And when you spoke about it, I, I listened again and I got like a huge insight that this is also like my life experience, like conclusions I have made about life experience, they can, they can transform. Like it's something that used to be bitter. It doesn't need to be bitter anymore now, today. That doesn't make sense what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> to, to me, it makes sense. I believe I'm understanding. I appreciate all your points, all your sharing. Yeah, so it's all, all the senses affects our consciousness. That's why responsible life means we're responsible about what we intimately associate with in terms of sight, smell, hearing, tasting. That's why we're encouraged. Okay, we want to progress in this process. Be responsible, consume only prashadam, the, the sense of taste. And uh, so, and then, and, and the, the sense of hearing is especially emphasized that it's like, like if someone's sleeping, the sense of the, through hearing, through sound, he wakes up. 
So if we really want to wake up to spiritual life, especially the hearing is recommended. But as you say, all, all senses, and then I, I appreciate the jaundice example. The, the example is uh, apparently if someone has the disease of jaundice then sweet things taste bitter. Still, the cure for jaundice is to eat sweets. And the more one eats sweets, then, then it, it tastes less, as one gets cured, the sweets taste less and less bitter and more and more sweet. So we are in a materially diseased condition in mis misidentifying self with the body. So the more we hear, yeah, the example you gave, probably millions of times I've, I've heard, I'm, I'm not the body. <laughs> Okay, so uh, with this, oh, so what's the point of reading it again? Because it's not just reading, it's association with realized souls like Srila Prabhupada. And then by hearing, then I get more realization. I get more, then I'm actually having an experience. So I can say I, that the more I hear, the more I experience myself as eternal spirit, soul, not the body. I got a long, long way to go towards complete realization, but. I have enough experience to know the process works. So, so the, the discipline of Krishna consciousness, the regular principles, the sadhana, this, the morning program reading Bhagavatam, it can, it can feel bitter because we're materially diseased. And the more, the, more we, the more we taste the sweetness of Bhagavatam and chanting Hare Krishna, then the more we experience the sweetness as the material disease goes away. It makes a lot of sense. Mm. Yeah, and, and it's it came to me in the in the when you spoke about making the self the master. Yes. And to experience that, and I think that is an experience that for me is it's it's so uncomfortable, or there's something like there's a lot of me, my body, my sense. I don't know that resists that experience, of of really listening to the self, <laughs> or super soul, and to follow that, and that was. And you know what opened up for me is that it doesn't need to stay uncomfortable. It could become like a very comfortable, <laughs> comfortable experience, joyful experience. Yeah, yeah. Krishna says, Shushu Kam Kartumaviyam. This process, it's directly experienced, not just abstract or theoretical, and it's joyfully performed. So I hear you're opening up. Uh, it doesn't need to be bitter and uncomfortable. Uh, the, uh, this, this can be joyful. You're, you're getting more and more glimpses of that reality and that's, that's enthusiasm for your soul. Yeah, and I have one curiosity, <laughs> which from the verse, yes. so it's, it, from the verse I understand, first there were sages and then they wanted to hear about God and that's when all the, everything was created that could <laughs> that helps them hear about God. So they were, they didn't have ears. Mm -hmm. they, they couldn't hear before. How can I imagine that if I can imagine it? Okay. I, 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 don't, I don't know that I have too much realization or much at all about this, but one thing, the verse you mentioned about uh, this realizing the self is master. I'll just give the reference. That's Canto 1, Chapter 2, Text 21, just, just so everyone's clear in that. So my understanding, this, this is about the dawn of creation. So, so you got sages, yeah, and maybe like their 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 spirit souls and their bodies are not quite formed yet. This is the dawn of creation. You got all sorts of living entities packed in the body of Vishnu. And some of them are whatever in hellish tamasic lower modes, and, and, and some are so, so some are like great sages. And yeah, and the, the material bodies are not formed yet. And this is the process of formation. So perhaps they exist in subtle bodies and like such subtle bodies, and of course the spirit, spirit soul is there. So yeah, the material bodies are not formed yet. It's, it's at like the, the dawn of creation. Living entities have been packed up in the body of Vishnu for 311 trillion years. And now creation is happening and the, 
the material forms are, are beginning to manifest. That's my understanding. So this would mean sages are part of creation. It's like a, a function or a principle of creation. And so they're, they're, they're like posts, like demigods. Yeah. Yeah. It's described, there's like the seven great sages and there are seven, there's a, a famous constellation with seven stars. Each one, each star is really the body of, of a great sage. Yeah, they're like they're like demigods. That's that's accurate. That's accurate. Okay, thank you. Shri Mad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. All right, Krishna. How do you both? No, thank you. Thank you.